this generation is because we are at the bridge, so we have to literally, some of the baggage that we brought from the previous generation, jettison them, so <coughs> the way, look around them, <coughs> pick the new things that work, and run with it. Okay? So we are in this situation where we've come as adults, reckon and taken up a number of things that are not useful. They're not 21st century compliant. They are no good for us. We need to throw them away. But that comes with the realization and being aware of what's going on in the world around us. And that's very, very important. Because if we don't do that, we will literally transfer the mistakes of the last generation to the next generation. And there's absolutely no need. Somebody said, We are the bridge. We are the bridge. Because the bridge is the link between the past, the present, and the future. Somebody said, The bridge is the link between the past. The, the bridge is the link between the past, the present, and the future. Okay? That's hard work, actually. It's not an easy task at all. Because without a, 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 a black parent who had to deal with slavery, their job was simple. With the ones who had to do civil rights, their jobs were very simple, I believe. Although they would say their jobs were difficult. But actually, for us, linking the past, the present, and the future is harder. Because you need to be aware of what's gone before. You need to be aware of what's happening now, and you need to be able to project into the future of what's likely to happen. So we're doing a hard job, and we need to be on top of it. And that makes it a lot harder, and technology doesn't help us. And that's why it's important. It's really key that more than ever before, we need to be focused as parents. <coughs> we need to be ahead of the game, okay? But we're going through hard. If a child learns to live with fairness, he learns justice, okay? I'm saying this because... If we don't understand and, and make a deliberate effort to uh, uh, put out of our minds some of the things we've taken on from the past, okay, and some of the things that might confuse us or color our judgment from the present, we will not be able to create for our children those qualities and those, sorry, those characteristics that they need for that future. And that's why this is important. If you learn, if a child is with security, he learns to have faith. If he lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If he lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. It is so important. This is key, and that's uh, what I'm going to be coming in on most of the things. Now, the first thing I've said there, it is absolutely crucial that we teach by example. We teach by example. In other words, in building our children for that future, in forming that link, now, where does this come in as a bit from the past? Uh, growing up in Africa, I know that my parents, what they would say is, uh, they just give you instructions. They don't necessarily live like that. Okay? They tell you what to do. They don't exactly do it. Now, that doesn't work. Okay? You can get away with that in Africa, I thought. But here, it doesn't work. You confuse the child. Why? Because the child is in a cosmopolitan in the world where the child can see all sorts of other races and can see what's going on. If you do that here, it won't work. And forget about it, it's not even here. Anywhere in the world. Why? Because there is the internet. Your child will soon find out that what you're doing, nobody else does that. <laughs> and then you're in trouble. Okay? Which is why we can't hide anymore. Okay? Which is why we need to be on top of it. So, teaching children by example, I find the most effective way, because it's something I've done, tried and tested. And I like what I, I say. I say, first of all, by example, you do it for them, in other words, you show them, you do it with them, and you allow them to do it. And where we all fall down, because we live in a stressful world, is that we often don't want to wait for them to learn. We want them to just do it as quickly as they can, and if they can't, then we help them. When we do that, we are damaging them, we're not helping them, and we're not building them up for that next journey. Okay? So it is absolutely crucial. We show them first, we do it with them, and the bit that takes longest is actually give them time to practice it. Some examples I've got here to just to, 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 give, to give you an idea. My uh, 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 middle child is one that um, she she's very different from my first. She makes you do the work, and you might all, you may identify with this. She makes you do the work. So with my elders, I could just give her a set of instructions and say do this A B C D E, and she'll get on with it. 
my middle one, she will not. You can give all the instruction you like. If you don't sit on her back and make her do and actually check that she's doing it, she will not do it. Now, I needed to get this child to be at uh, for 11 class exams a couple of years ago. And how I went about it was I started waking up, uh, and I always, I'll talk about structure in a minute, but I started uh, uh, waking her up very early in the morning. So during the holidays, she would work 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. whenever she was on holiday. And during term time, she would do uh, 5 a.m. to 6.30 every morning before she goes to school. Now, obviously, that was tough for me because I had other things to do. Mm -hmm. But I had to show her, and I had to do this for a period of about a year, for her to, if I didn't sit with her, wake her up and do it with her, my objective would be futile. Mm -hmm. I would lose her. But if I wake her up and yell at her and say, go and do this and that, it wouldn't work. I had to literally wake her up, sit with her, set her things to do, check it with her, one after the other. Now what happened was, having done that for about a year, when she then got to the next level, she had learned how to do it. Yeah. Okay? She wasn't perfect at organizing herself, but she now knew that to be able to achieve certain things, she had to factor in the time, wake up early, and do the work step by step. We're still working at it, she's not there yet, but that's an example of why you need to show them how and allow them to do it. I've got another example there as uh, someone I know uh, very much. Uh, uh, is, a, is a parent who, a uh, parent of a seven year old. Every Saturday, this father spends three hours, he works 14 hours a day by the way, he works in the city, spends three hours with his seven year old daughter in a room teaching her maths. Okay, uh, Iranian and uh, uh, English descent. Teaching her maths. Now, this child is known as, in school, as one of the talented or seen as talented and gifted. But nobody, I believe everybody is gifted. Every single person, remember what I said about the blank disc? All child, every child arrived on this planet gifted. It's how you help them to convert what they have. You need to spend time with them, it requires time. Which is why I like what my brother said, the parents are the key. We can't achieve anything without the parents. Nothing is possible. The schools can't do it, the governments can't do it. Why? Because you hold the ace cards. Children arrive at yours trusting you absolutely until we abuse that trust. Okay? They arrive at ours depending on us totally. They love us, and whether they like it or not, they're automatically inclined to go with whatever we tell them. So we have that advantage, and we must never forget that. And that's what puts us in a very strong position. So this father spent three hours uh, every Saturday with his son, and uh, with his daughter, so she's gifted and talented. No, she's not, because he spends time with her. The next one, in the middle there, I like it very much. Now, this boy is now 16. He was coming up to 11 plus exam about six or five years ago. His parents hadn't been spending time with him because they, at the time, thought, don't push him hard, just leave him alone. Uh, I can do whatever he wants to do. And then it turned out that the boy wanted to go, the boy decided he wanted to go to one of the most academically successful schools in the country. The parents said, no, 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 don't worry. A father's a top uh, a lawyer in the country, works 14 hours a day. Say, no, no, don't worry, there's no need. Just do whatever you like. You don't need to aspire to that. You don't need to, you know, there's enough money in the family. The boy said, no, that's where I want to go. They chose him for him and thought he would go to a school not so academically challenging. And the child said, is that not that academically challenging school or no other school? Forget it. It was about, at this time, it was about nine to ten months before the exams. What to do? And I love this example. This is what the father did. He works 14 hours a day, travels around the world, extremely busy man. He cancelled six months of his Saturdays out and spent for the next six months, six hours every Saturday, coaching this boy in every single way possible for the exams. Now, hear this. He's a lawyer. The exams that this boy needed to work on was physics and chemistry. He's an international lawyer, well paid. He can afford to employ any tutor he like. He went to Oxford. He has the money, but he said, just to be sure. He bought the physics books, the chemistry books. He taught himself. 
Then he taught his child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Six months, six hours every Saturday. By the time the child had the exam, he was the best in his set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, he just had his uh, GCSE exams, 10 A stars. trying to say we are the bridge yeah. all kids are talented yeah. you just need to work with them yeah. you need to show them how mm -hmm. by the time this boy got to the stage where he now got 10 stars his father had taught him six years ago how to do it mm -hmm. before then he didn't know how and his father pretty much his parents or whatever he didn't want to do the work but they put in the work they got the result now he knows how which is why it's important that we must show them. Because otherwise, if you don't show them when they are rubber just as a blank disc, who is to show them? Your neighbor? The government? The school? Absolutely not! Your child, your job, your responsibility. You must be the bridge. Somebody say, I am the bridge. I am, I am the bridge. bridge. And I must be that bridge. And I must be that bridge. Because your child is counting on you. You see, they're counting on us. If you don't do it for them, nobody will. Okay? I love that. I really love that. And the last example there is another person uh, who's tried attending one of the most academically successful schools in the country as well. Uh, really, really successful. Uh, quite happy to give you names and details if you want to come and speak to me later about these schools. Um, again, people say that schools are brilliant. Well, schools are only brilliant because the parents there are working hard. Okay, schools don't just suddenly become brilliant. They are brilliant because the parents work hard at it. In this particular school, parents spent year before preparing their children for the academic syllabus for the coming year. When everybody's playing in summer, they go through, in summer months, take their kids through the next academic year's work. They don't have to understand it, but introduce them to it such that by September, the concept is no longer new. Yeah. And so you have a situation where the children, they're well ahead. And they all come up with A stars. Okay? So that's, those are examples I want to leave with you about showing them how, doing it with them, 